You ask, I answer. I put up a poll the other day, actually the other week, asking what kind of videos you prefer to see on my channel. Whether it was videos on vinyl or old radio repair videos, TV repair videos. It was 50-50 for radio repair and TV repair. So, uh, I'm answering with this. I went and picked this up with my, uh, this is my cousin's. I picked this up in, uh, Vegreville. I'm kind of in the Edmonton area, so it's about an hour away. So not too bad. And, um, the seller, this was from Marketplace. The seller originally asked $45 for it. They, uh, tested it a couple weeks ago. They put a record on it and said it sounded like it was playing slow. And, um, or sounded like the speed was slow. And, uh... I guess that, with that fact, they decided, you know what, you come here and pick it up for, you can come here and just pick it up for free. So, we thought, hey, why not? So, we went and picked it up today, and brought it back here. He knows I'm a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff. I know practically, well, not, not, not quite everything, but practically almost everything. Almost everything. Practically almost doesn't sound right, does it? But, um... Uh, I want to keep my intros a little bit shorter. I'm going to keep this intro short and I just want to just get right into it. Across the province provided feedback. There's the FM. Design was the preferred option for more than oh, here we go. Oh, that's AM, sorry. Waiting pools, installing this new I don't think AM is in Syria. Oh, yeah, it is in Syria. This is FM, stereo. I don't know if this has FM stereo multiplex in it, I'm not sure. I, I found a model number and a couple of pictures of the same model on Google Images online. I can't find anything for a service manual or any other data on this. Zenith stuff seems to be so damn hard to find in terms of like data and all that. I don't know why, but I always have a hard time finding anything that's under the Zenith. I mean, Zenith is a great brand name, but I have such a damn hard time finding the hell like any data is on you know I'm blocking the light where any data is on stuff like this so yeah radio uh, actually that works well usually I turn it on I automatically get the FM music then I get a copyright so uh, right today the main focus is um, my cousins uh, well my cousin and I share in common the interest in vinyl and that's why he got this He's trying to go with the, uh, have a little, create a little bit of a vintage aesthetic in his apartment. He thought this would work perfectly. And, um, I mean, he doesn't really want to use it for, like, to listen to records with good sound quality. It's just more, he mentioned it's more something to just to listen to in the background. So I don't think he said, he, he didn't sound like he was too worried about how, how good it, or he was too worried about it sounding perfect. So... We'll sound, try to get it sounding as good as possible. The turntable does seem a little stiff. And there does seem something a little bit... This does seem a little... little loose to me. I don't know, that's just me. And this... I don't know if this was done after the fact, and that's why I'm getting this, like... It's... We tested it, we took it home, and we, te we got it here, we tested it, and it sounded a bit... Like, the speed was itself was fine, but it was warped. It almost sounded like the record was itself was warped. I'm trying to focus this. But it wasn't warped. The record isn't warped. It's something with the... If you look at the turntable when it's spinning, there's something that's off. Like, there's a bulge here. And it's not because this goes down. By the way, this is glued on, and we just pulled it off. It's not a big deal. I can just glue it back on myself. So, we ended up pulling this off. To see if there was like a lump of glue or something that kind of dried up underneath. There was nothing. And so, um, I don't know, we tried different methods. I used this for test. I took this off another record player. Of course, this is a little too high, but it somewhat, it somewhat fixed the issue. And then I kind of thought about it because these old record players had that, that like the rubber eyed their wheel. It's not, they're not belt driven, of course, like the modern ones. They have a little rubber either, either wheel that's right here. And uh, I wondered if maybe there was like a, you know, obviously it's not completely dried up because if it was, it wouldn't be spinning the turntable on all the rubber, the rubber wheel or idler wheel or whatever you want to call it. And the rubber drive wheel. And um, so obviously it's not dried up, but I think it's, I think it's maybe got like a, 
a bend or a warp in it or something in the rubber, maybe. See if Content ID will even pick this up. Houghton Annie Folk Songs on Crown. I'm going to do Big Big Rock Candy Mountain. I might only be able to play a short amount of this so I don't get copyrighted. So really, really what you do is you just put it on the stacking spindle. See where it's got the... Um, focus that. It's got like the... Um, These little moving pieces, those are, those are what slip out to let the record down after you put this on. So you do this, and you, when you put it all, when you bring the, the stacking arm all the way around, it automatically goes down and holds it in place. I don't know why I'm not on, why am I not on autofocus. There we go. And then you just go to auto. Sometimes it takes a while for the auto to trip, yeah. See, it starts to spin. it does anything. You know, it's almost like it's going to, oh now it speeds up a little bit. See it moving up and down, there's like a something's pushing up. Right in that. I found the lily pad that's just right for sitting. Mm -hmm. I wish you'd look at the pretty flowers in the rain. Spring rain tells flowers to wake up and blossom. Do you think you could change from a frog? When you're listening to just plain old voice and not music, you don't really hear it. Really? You're going to do this now? That's like not... I mean, it's the slightest... Well, Crap. This thing is very loose. I think it's very loose. That may be part of the problem. But like the slightest bit now, it's warping. As soon as I get the camera on, it doesn't want to warp, really. As soon as I get the camera on, it just stops doing whatever it was doing before. I just put it down like I don't really care about these. These are test records. <laughs> They're quite scratched, so. I did bring out some of my good records. Like I got Dark Side of the Moon. On vinyl. This one is... These modern ones... I, tr I wanted to try some of my modern ones to see what it sounded like with an older cartridge because sometimes it can sound distorted. It sounded a tad bit distorted, but the warp was worse with the music. I can only play a few seconds of this because then I'll get blocked. Well, I won't, the video won't like, the video might get blocked. I don't know. Apparently, uh, you could be careful with anything NBC Universal, anything that's under NBC Universal, and NBC Universal. Apparently, I can't bloody speak. Because apparently if it's under them and I post a couple seconds of it, even if it's not like really prominent in the video, if it's like in the background or something, it'll just block my video worldwide. So it seems like NBC Universal or Universal is very copyright happy. I got a little bit of dust on there. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna. Okay, so here's a 78. We got Columbia Records, My Happiness by the Marlin Sisters. Again, I'm probably gonna only be able to play a couple seconds of this.
I'm kind of scratching it by doing that, but I don't know. See, there's supposed to see there's a switch between LPs and 78s, but it's just like on this dam. Like, is that not? I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me. You know. I don't know, something seems up there. But again, if it's all the way up there, you can see it. this piece here just blocks the, the record behind my finger, my thumb. See, it just goes all the, come on. Now yeah, I won't focus because of the lighting, but... Again, it sounds a little distorted just because it's, this record is a bit dirty. This little, it's, it's old shellac, too. But, um, put this back over here. I don't know why in 45, it just sounds like complete trash. Where's my 45? I don't know where the hell I'm putting any of my crap anymore. Hold on. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's not this. We thought it was this originally. We pulled it off. It was just glued on. And <coughs> it got dust flying up. All right, we'll wash some of the glue off. And maybe try to get, like, some of the lumpiness out on here. It's not that. It's something underneath here. It's not the metal itself that's warped. I don't think. Actually. Whoop. You break anything. There's lots of springy action. Spring on this side. my head. See, this thing is not fully. I don't want to break it either, but it's not fully locked in place. This thing's not too terribly heavy, well, actually, if you have two guys lifting it. So, um, actually, I need to see if I find a piece of wood to prop it up so it doesn't hit my head. I mean, it kind of will stay open itself. Kind of force it there. I don't know why that's not. But yeah. Okay, so we got Led Zeppelin 2 on. Listen to this. As much of that as I can play. It sounds pretty, pretty good. What I did is I, I think I figured out it might be like a weight balance issue with the turntable. Because what I did was I put this on. This is from my Garard. I think it's Type A. I, just, I think it's just called the Garard Type A turntable. Uh, that I. That's the future project that I got to work on. This whole uh, part here is real screwed up. That'll be like an in, probably a more of an in-depth. I want to try to make that more of an in-depth video. Since that's such a complicated record player, I probably have no choice over to. But I put this on. This is kind of like a... I thought this would kind of weigh it down too much because it, it's quite heavy. It's just a... Like a steel... I don't really know what it is. I don't know what you want to call it. But it just goes over top of this on the garage turntable. This goes over top of this. And that goes on 
Then on top of that goes the little rubber mat right there. And um, now all of a sudden it almost sounds nearly nearly perfectly fine. There's a tad, there's the slightest bit of warp, but it's like the weight. If I put the weight on the turntable so it doesn't like wobble so much, it doesn't, um, it doesn't warp or sound like warpy as warpy. I think it's the weight of the turntable or how bad, because it almost sounded like it seemed a little too bouncy to me. Like you would, without the weight on it, you could just bump into it very lightly and the needle would bounce up and down because the needle has got spring on it as well. Which I don't know if that's even original, but I got a, I was looking at internet archives and I found, I was looking at the model number for this and I went through it again to see if I could find, and I found a whole Zenith back catalog of like service manuals from 1942 to 1982 so I'm thinking this is like late 60s early 70s judging by the 8 track I would not could not judging by this having an 8 track and I could not see it being from any anywhere past 1982 so I'm gonna go look I'm gonna go do some research and uh, see if I can pull out through that big book I gotta sit on my laptop because it'll take me a while to get through it see if I can pull up uh, the model on Internet Archives or the service manual. Okay, so it's about 9.35. I don't know why I gotta do a time track. I feel like I gotta do a time track every time, but I really don't. I got it out of here. All I have to do was take these clips off the bottom that were holding on to the springs on the bottom here. On this side and on this side. And I thought these screw. I thought it I thought you had to take these screws out, but you don't. What it does is it just holds these in place right here on the thread. Then over, the, over top of the thread they put a spring. So now, I'm trying to figure out, I think there's something underneath the turntable platter that's causing it to kind of go up and down. It's riding up against something underneath. And so what I want to do is I want to try to attempt to take the platter off. And I was looking at a couple other videos, but these, I guess this is a BSR, which is made in Britain, and they, I guess they outsourced record players, like in the late 70s, early 80s, or maybe mid 80s, possibly even late 80s, for uh, uh, Sony, because there's a Sony record player on the exact same model, under the exact same record player. The BSR, the original BSR player looks close to this, but it's not exact. The Sony one almost looks exact, so maybe this is a Sony, or Sony, but made by BSR. It's a BSR model, C123-E-1. Or it just has the reference number you can use, which is A30. Just put A30. Dash E1, and you'll get the same thing that'll pop up on Google. Of course, all the service manuals you have to pay for. But I watched a video from Jim's Radio Shop on YouTube. Uh, he's another great uh, Canadian uh, Canadian record player slash radio repair um, channel. He does some great content. He's from uh, Ontario. I think he's from Toronto, I believe. Anyways, I, you should check him out. He does some really great in-depth videos. Um, but uh, I'm going to... Oh, I don't have very much battery left. I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to try to... What I guess, essentially, we have to try to do... What, the, what they say to do is to lift and turn at the same time. Try to get this off. I need to have this sitting on something because I don't want to wreck any gears underneath. I can try this. Uh, Okay, I can't. That's probably a horrible choice in terms of copyright. But come on. I couldn't resist playing my original copy of Abbey Road. I was very uh, cautious about playing on this until I got this perfect. And I knew the needle wasn't going to scratch it or anything. But I got the sound pretty much.
put something else that's less that I have a lesser chance of getting copyrighted with. Uh, I don't know, I don't see like a record label on this. Oh, maybe the top is, what does it say? Main roads? Is that a record? I guess that is a record label. Yeah, the, the issue was, I finally figured out how to uh, get the, uh, when I put the uh, original rubber back on. I was playing around with this, I finally got this out of here, the entire turntable, and I got the, um, the platter off itself, I guess really it with these B, uh, B, BSR, which I guess they outsource a lot for Sony, so this can be considered a Sony, I guess. So I took off the platter, and underneath the platter there's like a, um, like a nut that almost sits underneath, and it's it's a like um, I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to take everything apart again. There's like a little nut. Oh, I could. There's like a little nut that sits on the bottom here, and underneath that nut, there are some bearings, like tiny little ball bearings. And there's uh, on top of it, there's just the nut that sits on there. And I think it had too much grease and it was sliding around. And it was causing the turntable to wobble up and down. And so what was happening is it was making it sound like it was roaring. Or roaring. Like kind of just very, like the record itself was warped and it wasn't. It sounds a lot better now, so. And uh, I pretty much, I flattened this as much as I can. Got out of the, all the, uh, the lumps out of it and whatnot. So. Sounds fairly good. There's just the slightest little bit of warp, but it's very really not that noticeable. Uh, unless you listen real closely, it's fairly good. It's softer sounds, like softer guitars. If I play Here Comes the Sun, you can definitely hear it a little bit. But uh, The next thing I want to do, he said he didn't really care to get the 8-track, but I'll throw it in there as a bonus for him. Uh, I'll... See if I can get this working. I believe this just comes out. We just un take the screws out. The side panel just comes out. And then I think it's it's, it's going to need a new band. So, go to tape. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I didn't realize I got pilot lamp. Undo that. Cool. Okay, well, I undid that. The hell is it? I guess that's the power to the 8-track, isn't it? So it just taps it into the 120 volts here? In series? That's interesting. Am I correct on that? That's what it looks like. Of course, these all these damn zip ties. So I'm probably not, I don't know if I'll even be able to, oh, I should be able to get it out somewhat. Um, oh, this has, it has external speaker outputs too. That's all the external speaker outputs. Right, I got the 8-track back out, and sure enough, yep. Of course, there's no belt. Classic symptom with these when you got no action whatsoever. I realized I had to take some of these screws out from underneath the cabinet. And then once you to get these out, it just pulls out, and this wood cabinet does not 
come off so I didn't have to take those screws off with the wood cabinet. I thought maybe it was part of the piece of wood, but it makes sense now. This just kind of all slides out. And uh, I'm going to go see if I can have, oh I don't have a band that I can use, but you can use elastic bands providing they're the right size and whatnot, and you got a decent enough amount of tension, you can get the right speed. I've done it with the one I have on my desk in my room, and it sounds great, and it hasn't slipped off at all. And uh, it's a great, um, it's a great replacement. Oh, that's that's cool. That resistor. All right, moment of truth. I put rubber band from the kitchen on it. Let's see what that does. Well, that was a quick and easy fix. I wasn't real, I wasn't quite sure that would be the correct tension, but hey. And this one's got more of a lip on it. Some of these are just flat discs that have no lip on the side. This one has... Yeah, this has a... Uh, this has a little bit of it. The only problem is that this might eventually roll off. Because it's got no, like... Nothing to really stick it down. But, um, I turn the volume on because I don't want to wake up all the neighbors and have complaints, like I said. But I'm going to put it back in. And I'm going to play the 8-track, and I'm going to see how long it lasts until the belt, or the elastic band ends up snapping off. Here's a second one, just in case. Uh, it shouldn't snap off, but... There's that. So there's that. I will leave it in just to test the band's longevity. But uh, I want to. This damn lid is falling closed. It's so annoying. It's so frustrating. I want to test this thing. Like I said, these were made for cars back in the day when you didn't have. Most of the cars in the 70s didn't have an 8. Uh, they didn't have cassette decks. They just had the 8 track deck. So you just plug this into your 8-track deck and you can put your cassette tapes in here. So I'm going to try this. See this. Oh. It's running, so let me go get a, a tape. Uh, we'll do this so we can avoid copyright. Her, it is in stereo. And I remember I grabbed her and began to rock and scream and rock and scream out of fear, yes, but also because I knew that they did not like noise. But I fainted probably out of fear of screaming so much. And I don't really know how long I was out. But when I woke up, 
I saw with my seven-year-old eye what the rats had done to that man. So there's that. Turn that down to avoid copyright, but what I really did was I put a new cartridge on this. The needle fell, the original needle fell out, and the, other, the original cartridge was having all sorts of problems. It had the weird, like, spring-loaded pin that went into the top. I got rid of the spring with this one, and I just put the little, it's almost like a little um, pin that just holds it in place rather than just putting a screw in to hold the cartridge in. It's not the exact same cartridge, but it fits perfectly, sounds perfect. At least now it does. Before it was distorting because I had the pin in too tight, and it was pushing it down too far into the record. So if you loosen it a bit, I guess that's what the spring is for. If you loosen it a bit, basically, it frees it up a little bit more, so it kind of just floats on the record and doesn't distort. And that's the whole idea of the springs on the either corner as well. You try to avoid, whoop, try to avoid vibration. But it still seems like it... Sometimes it vibrates a little bit. We have brand new cartridge. I don't know what I did with the, uh, there's the old one. Yeah. So here's the, well, that's the new cartridge. Put it in there. And here's the setup of the old one, basically. So you had this little, um, I guess it was a plug that was attached to the wires. I just desoldered the plug off and because I didn't have a, a female end on the other cartridge to plug this into. So I just soldered, soldered the other cartridge on and then using the pin that was on top of this, basically there's a pin with a spring on it. And uh, I don't know what I did with the little blue arrow thing that was on the top. But it basically lets it float on the record so it doesn't dig all the way into the record and start distorting. But I think it, it failed over time. Yo, like and subscribe!